Hi, welcome back to Contemporary Painting. Now we're gonna talk about our first assignment and the two artists we're going to focus on that is gonna inspire us for our first drawing and painting assignment. The two artists we're gonna look at are Georgia O'Keeffe and Arthur Dove. These are two American artists at the turn of the century around the 1900s that were really making strides to paint in new and exciting ways. And so let me share my screen and I will share with you a present presentation that will have images of their artwork. Let's start with Georgia O'Keeffe. You might have heard of her many times before. She is a very famous American artist who painted flowers. But I want you to realize that she had a very significant role in the progression of modern art beyond just the basic flower. She was born in 1887 in Wisconsin. And she, when she graduated from high school, she knew she wanted to be an artist. So some of her first drawings, um, that really tried to express this new modern idea were done in charcoal when she was in college and one of her friends liked them so much she rolled them up and mailed them to a famous photographer and gallery owner named Alfred Stieglitz. Alfred Stieglitz um, owned a gallery and was a photographer and was the first person in 1916 to exhibit Georgia O'Keeffe's charcoal drawings. He fell in love with her and they ended up being married um, for the rest of his life. She became his model for a lot of his photographs. And so over the years, Georgia O'Keeffe became as famous herself as her incredible paintings. When she first started painting, she lived in New York City with Alfred Stieglitz, and she was known for more of her industrial work of buildings and city landscapes um, in the mid-1920s. Her painting has always been very clean and precise, and she was able to create beautiful gradients with her oil paints. She then in 1929 moved to New Mexico and it was there in which she fell in love with the barren stark landscape of the southwest and that's when she started to paint um, her skull paintings. These are still realistic because we can identify the objects in her paintings as skulls and plants and landscapes. She continued to paint these beautiful, smooth, um, gradient landscapes with clean, crisp color and really beautiful edges on her shapes as she began to explore some new ideas with her painting. It was there that she then started to fill her canvases with close up versions of these particular objects, such as seashells and other natural objects. So one of her quotes is, I decide I decided if you could paint a flower on a large scale, you couldn't ignore its beauty. And so what she was trying to say is in this busy world, it's even busier now, but in the 1920s, the industry was building up and cities were getting bigger and she wanted everyone to stop and slow down and enjoy the beauty of nature. And so again, she created paintings with limited color. The paintings expanded from edge to edge and enlarged small, often overlooked objects such as flowers and seashells. This is when Georgia O'Keeffe started to explore the realism versus abstraction. She started very realistically drawing flowers the way that they looked and really enlarged the canvases. And so this would be under the heading of realism. And as she grew with her paintings, she was known for her vivid colors. She often did not have every color in the rainbow in her paintings. She created a color grouping or what they call palettes so that her paintings had a harmony with them because they all had the same color grouping. She then became <clears throat> closer and closer and closer in her subject matter, is really zooming in to small centers of flowers versus showing every petal. 
She then began to explore changing the shapes a little bit and zooming in even more so that it kind of is based on a flower, but then began to have qualities of their own that it could be more in the term of abstraction until Georgia O'Keeffe started to get into true abstraction in which when you look at her paintings, it might be a flower, it might be water, it might be fabric, it might be a sky scene. That's when you know you're starting to form and uh, go into the realm of abstraction when you're not a hundred percent sure what it is it resembles the certain things but it's not overly recognizable and so many of her abstractions were indeed flowers but the that incredible zoomed in look really started to open people's ideas and to say hey it could be a flower it could be flames it could be other things Things in nature. It could be just a painting with beautiful shapes. And so as Georgia O'Keeffe began to explore more and more, she began to be, began to become more focused on the compositions of her paintings, the way that shapes are arranged on her canvases, and the color palettes, the colors that she used in her paintings to create interest. She often repeated colors and had central focuses of her paintings, yet they started to take on new meanings and are no longer on the realm of realism and then became more abstraction. These are two of her most famous paintings. Again, it is um, a close up of a flower, yet it could mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. She was able to create depth in her painting, even though it was not a recognizable image. And she really filled the canvases with her paintings. Here are some more of her um, deeper, darker colors that she used. And the idea that these are based on flowers, but they're so close up that they started to become abstract. Here is one of her most famous abstractions of a bone. This people look at this painting and see an egg or see a sun, but actually the yellow in the painting is not um, an object, but a hole. It is the landscape through a bone. And here is a picture of Georgia O'Keeffe in her eighties. She lived until she was 99 years old, living in the desert, almost exclusively wearing black clothes, hair pulled back tightly, no makeup and she painted and painted and painted and here is um, part of a hip bone um, of an animal and how you can see through it and see the yellow sky um, and she painted her last unassisted painting in 1972 and her art continued to um, inspire people for generations to come. Here is her in her 90s on the back of a motorcycle with her assistant going through the desert. She never lost her zest for life and her paintings were very influential to that transition from realism to abstraction. Arthur Dove was uh, the first that he is known for being the first American abstract painter. That first time that Georgia O'Keeffe was exhibited in Alfred Stieglitz gallery with her charcoal abstractions, Arthur Dove was also um, exhibited during that time. He started with a little bit more realism. He lived on a houseboat for years. So a lot of his images had to do with seascapes and boating um, and the lights that shine at night when you're on a boat looking at the city. Um, New England and where I am right now is a sea village and this is one of my favorite of his paintings these are fog horns and so if you're ever by the coast on a foggy day you would hear the sound of the fog horns echoing through the sky and he was one of the first people to start to paint sound versus painting imagery um here are some more of author dove's paintings 
based on nature, based on things, but had more of an abstract quality to them. And these were new and exciting paintings that were never painted before. You have to realize every single painter up until this point was painting in a very realistic way. And Arthur Dove and Georgia O'Keeffe were ones in which they wanted to explore new ideas by zooming in and painting close-up versions and painting sound. And so I hope you like this presentation and this is going to be the basis of our next assignment.